Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda and happy Halloween. To celebrate, I am going to make a giant candy corn on the cob. My eyes twitching. Can you see it? This Halloween, I'm dressing up as Yolanda Gamp, author of How to Cake It, a cake book. I just tied my hair up because she does that in her videos. <laughs> to make this candy corn on the cob, I baked eight four inch round vanilla cakes. My cakes are leveled with the caramelization removed from the bottom and now I'm gonna remove the caramelization from the sides. It's time to simple syrup all eight cakes with the help of Sir Squeeze. Now I only have four pans, so I had to make two batches. And you'll notice there's quite a difference in the color of my cakes. Four of them look a little more yellow, and that's because in my second batter, I used farm fresh eggs, and those yolks just took it up a notch. That's very harvesty of me, I feel. Fall Halloween harvest. I don't think farm fresh eggs when I think Halloween. What about egging people's houses? Don't, that, yeah, don't do it. And if you do, don't use farm fresh eggs. Eat those ones. <laughs> Once all the simple syrup has soaked in, it's time to stack these cakes with my Italian meringue buttercream. I began by stacking two at a time together with buttercream in between. And what I did was I alternated the vanilla with the farm fresh vanilla. And then I began to line them up on their sides. I need to build that cob. Mm -hmm. I'm building a cob. Mm -hmm. Without the corn. Correct. A cornless cob. <laughs> All of the recipes I used to make this cake are in my cake book. Vanilla cake is on page 24. Italian meringue buttercream is on page 30. And Sir Squeeze and his syrup are on page 34. Yes, he's on the book cover. I did try to like nudge him out of it. I feel bad because from here you can't even see him. Well, it's, it's his fault for being clear, okay? I chill my cake until the buttercream is firm and now it's time to carve this cake into a cob. This is a great cake to start with because you don't have to be afraid of the carving. It's kind of simple. The cakes are already round on their side and what you need to do is just sort of taper out and thin out either end. One end of the corn can be a bit thicker so you can taper it and then round out each end. So if you want to try making this cake or you know of a friend who would want to try making this cake, share this video with them. Just hit the button. Share the corn. It's harvest. Share the corn. That's a, that's a that's, good one. No, it's not catchy at all. <laughs> yes, it's time for the good old CCAC, Crumb Coat and Chill. I'm gonna be using candies to recreate the corn kernels on this cob. So I've decided to crumb coat and ice it in yellow white chocolate ganache. This will help them stick better. C, C, and C. That can also be Connie Contardi and Charlie. <laughs> Charlie is Connie's dog. Hello. I think they just did a photo shoot with Charlie this week from what I know. For the kernels on this giant corn on the cob, I'm using gummy candy corn. I'm just gonna take a sharp pair of scissors and cut off the white tips. To help them stick, I've decided to melt some yellow compound chocolate, put it in parchment piping bags, and I'm gonna stick the kernels on one by one, piping a little dot of chocolate, adding a kernel. So we're gonna be here for a while. Orhan, just like speed up the footage a bit, you know? Now, while I'm busy adding all of the corn kernels to my cake, I need to tell you something else. Camp Cake is back and goes on sale tomorrow, November 1st. Camp Cake is a live stream baking event taking place on December 9th, and we are gonna bake a bunch of holiday treats together. I'll be doing it here in my kitchen, and you will be in yours, and I'll do everything with you step by step. Sign up at howtocakeit.com. Early bird registration begins tomorrow and it's the cheapest price that camp cake will ever be. And we have so many camp cake bundles to help get you ready for an amazing day of baking together. Hey yo, are you done with all those kernels on the cob? Okay, so we're done? No. Oh. Excuse me. Wait, all the corn, all the cob is, or Excuse all the corn's on the cob. Excuse me, can I ask you a question? What else is on corn on the cob but corn? Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> now I need to make the top of the corn cob which I think is some kind of nub or stub. It's more of a stub. I'm sure it has a name. 
please, if you know the name, let us know below. I colored some gum paste a very light natural shade of green and rolled it out. Then I used a grass piping tip to imprint the top and use a circle cutter to cut out the appropriate size circle for the top of my corn cob. Then I rolled the rest of that green gum paste nice and thin with a nonstick board and my nonstick small rolling pin. And I used a textured mat that I have. Think about like a blade of grass, how it has texture running in one direction. And I pressed that onto these thin sheets of gum paste. Now I'm gonna use a sharp paring knife to cut this gum paste into sections that are kind of like jagged and a little bit bigger than the circle I cut out. What I want it to look like is this is the remains of the leaves I tore off of the corn. Once I've created a few of these little jagged pieces, I glue it all together with some piping gel, stacking a few of these torn off leaves, and then finally my circle on top. And then I add this piece to the top of the corn of the cob, again using yellow compound chocolate to glue it on. I didn't want to leave out the corn holders for the people who believe in them. I don't. I think they're really? unnecessary. I know. Surprising. I'm surprised. You should be surprised. I... My favorite rolling pin, the one I always use to roll out fondant. I purposely broke her apart and then placed cake dowels in either side of my rolling pin handle and put them into the corn. Now she has new life. She's no longer a rolling pin. She's a giant candy corn on the cob holder. Leave a hashtag below if you believe in the corn holders. Corn holders, hashtag corn holder, down below. I know you're ready to dig in and take a bite, but hello, just butter it. To butter my corn on the cob, I'm going to create some butter colored buttercream. Whoa. I know, it's intense. Just using a combination of two yellows, really sparingly, a little at a time. And once I have the right color, I press all of that butter into a bowl and chill it so it's firm. They call me mellow yellow, just butter it. I think I need to do another take. Turn the mic up, more reverb, little 808. Okay, there's something wrong with my mic. <clears throat> Again, backup, I need backup, Jocelyn. They call me mellow yellow, just butter it. Once it's firm, I then take that bowl and dip it in a little bit of hot water to release my buttercream, and then I use a nice sharp knife to cut two squares of butter. With the remaining butter, like the butter scraps, never waste butter. I melt the buttercream a little bit in the microwave. And then I add my squares of butter on top of the cob as well as some dripping butter. Cause you know as soon as you put butter on corn, it melts and it gets into the nooks and crannies. I have not used nooks and crannies on this show in a long time. You haven't. And I enjoy nooks and crannies. What could be better than butter in a nook and cranny? If you like this video, please let me know by hitting that share button and don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back on Thursday at 5 p.m. EST for a live stream episode of How to Kick It. Why don't we put this over here? Maybe not right now, because then I have to, I have to do it from the get-go. Okay, that's loud. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ooh, Jeremy's getting a little feisty. Mm. You Do you mean Jeremy or cinnamon bun? <laughs> Super Princess Alex left this wonderful comment that made us all laugh. And then another fan drew up a visual of Cinnamon Bun Jeremy. Hashtag Cinnamon Bun Jeremy. <laughs>